This is a question that was brought by one of our viewers. Seth Love is asking, hello, I tried to transfer the NFT to another address or account. I tried to stake and it's not working. It's stuck on a pending transaction, okay? And also he brought up that I am, I also tried to mint an NFT with, you know, on another account. This is assuming it's another wallet and the stake, it's not working. Staking only works on the contract deployer. Okay, okay, Seth Love, let me help you with that. So, very, very, very important. When we tell the staking smart contract, hey, I want to stake a couple of NFTs that I have on my wallet, the staking smart contract on behalf of the end user, hey, transfer the tokens, right? from the user's wallet to the staking contract. So that call gets done by the staking smart contract. However, the ERC721 token smart contract is like, well, who are you? And I don't have any authorization by the owner of those NFTs to transfer that to you. So I am not going to do that. So what needs to happen is that the buyer of those NFTs who's looking to stake them in the staking smart contract needs to tell the ERC721 token smart contract, hey, I am authorizing this staking smart contract to pull the NFTs from your ERC721 collection smart contract, right? So it's giving the authorization on behalf of the staking smart contract, hey, I am authorizing this staking smart contract to uh, do the transfer from my wallet to the staking vault. That has to be approved by the buyer or the holder of the NFTs. Because let's say if the staking smart contract have full control of all the NFTs in the ERC721 collection, then I, as the owner of the staking smart contract, I can say, well, you know, I want tokens 20 and 20 to 30 to be staked. And the holders of those NFTs will say, well, what happened with my NFTs? And someone else or, or, or the developer decided to transfer them to the staking vault without authorization. So this is, why that safe transfer from it's set on the ERC721. You as the NFT holder need to authorize the staking smart contract to transfer the tokens. And where that gets authorized, it doesn't get authorized on your wallet. It gets authorized on the ERC721 collection smart contract. You see where I'm going. Let's, let me show you. Let me go ahead, share my screen. I am going to do a quick drawing so you can see the picture and we'll test it out real quick. Okay. Okay. So the issue um, raised by one of our viewers, it's that if we use a wallet that is not the contract deployer wallet, he's not able to stake the NFTs on the vault or she, I'm sorry, she or he, he or she. Okay. Um, so we're not stable. Uh, um, able to stake because it's giving the error that it's not the owner of the tokens, which that's not true. It is, you know, he owns or she owns the tokens or the NFTs, right? So here's, here's, here's the problem. The problem is when you perform the stake, the stake function call, you're not actually telling the ERC721 collection smart contract, hey, move the tokens to the vault. Uh-uh, you're not doing that. It's the staking smart contract, the one that is requesting the ERC721 collection smart contract. Hey, you know, the tokens that we have on this wallet, please send that here. And the ERC721 collection smart contract is like, who are you? You don't own those NFTs. Why am I going to allow you? No, absolutely not. So that's why it's failing. It's saying, well, you don't have approval to move those tokens. Remember, when you do the staking call, uh, you're not telling the ERC721 smart contract to move the tokens. The staking smart contract is the one that is asking the ERC721 collection smart contract, hey, I got tokens one and two from, you know, from this wallet. Hey, send it, move it here. I'm like, well, I don't, I'm not going to do that. You're not proof for. So I, as the NFT holder or owner, need to personally tell the ERC721 collection smart contract, hey, I have a contract address and this will be the, the, the staking smart contract address hey i want you to approve that address to move or manage my nfts okay so that's why you're getting that failure it has to be done per holder right 
the reason why is you don't want any other you know user to tell hey move tokens one and two and those are not even their nfts you know you, you want to make sure that you're protecting the assets from all your holders okay so now you might be wondering well that's a lot of work i don't think nft holders will even you know do all this like they're not going to personally go to the, the staking smart contract sorry to the um token smart contract or the NFT smart contract and approve, you know, every single holder is gonna approve to stake. So then the staking smart contract can do the transfer. Uh-uh, you're, uh, you're, that's not gonna be possible, right? And, sh and, and yes, you don't wanna do that. So what you need to do, you have to make this a seamless operation so the end, your holders will not even know that they're moving NFTs. You have to do this function or you have to make the end user allow this in a very seamless method or, or fashion, like a very simple approach. How do we do that? I created created another another slide, which basically what we can do, let's build a Web3 DAP. And I am still working on that, but I wanted to do this video. We answer our viewers and I am helping as much as I can, uh, my viewers and my subscribers. And again, subscribe, please. <laughs> um, so what we need to do, it's basically on a Web3 DAP, I, I can create or I am going to code a function inside the stake button. So when an NFT holder decides to click the stake, the first instruction that we are going to do is say, hey, I want you to approve the staking vault to manage my NFTs. So that will be the action number one they're not going to see this interaction. All they're going to see is once they stake, their MetaMask wallet is going to say, hey, you know, I got a staking vault smart contract that wants to manage your assets. Are you allowing it? And when you say yes, or you approve on your MetaMask wallet, then this gets written on the ERC721 saying for this particular wallet, that wallet owner will allow or it's giving us approval to issue rights to the staking vault to execute a safe transfer from okay once that's done on the same function or a different function that it's also executed you know in hierarchical order so function one will be to do the approval right function two then it's going to actually do the transfer so in the second execution or the second function once this is pressed right after it gets approved then you know the staking smart contract proceeds to move the nfts okay so that's literally all we're going to be doing okay so i am deploying the smart contract on the this collection smart contract is using my um my n2d wallet okay so what i'm gonna do i have two other wallets i just need to transfer some test tokens to those so we can buy the nfts and you can see them staked okay so i just deploy the collection so i'm going to deploy i am going to deploy the um entity rewards this is a token smart contract the staking token smart contract and uh, once i get that i will deploy the staking smart contract and then i will go ahead and buy some nfts using not the deployer wallet but the user wallet okay so i'm going to deploy this one and now it's asking me of course for this so i got the collection and i got the token and boom i'm going to transact and I am going to deploy the NFT staking smart contract. Okay, so we're done with that. Bum, ba -da -bum, bum, bum. Okay, cool. So now we got three smart contracts, all three that we need. Okay, so now, because I need some test Ethereum, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna send 0.5 to one wallet or point, you know, 0.3 to one wallet and 0.3 to another one. So let me go to this wallet and copy the address, go here and send send to this wallet i'm gonna send 0 0.3 okay and how much do i have yeah 0.3 cool next i'm gonna send 0.3 here right and then i am going to send 0.3 to the other one so we can buy you know two nfts per per wallet 
Okay, so I sent 0.3 here. Now we got 0.3 here. Let me now copy here. Bump. Let me send to this as well. 0.03. Next, send and wait for the confirmation. Wait, 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 wait. This is the NDR from the previous video. Okay, cool. So now we should have um, 0.3 on each one. Awesome. So let's buy an NFT using this wallet. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the collection. Right. And we are going to mint to what address? My holder wallet. One NFT. So let's see if that works. And it does. Cool. Okay. So we got one wallet. We want an NFT. Okay. And now we should, you know, should go even lower. Dun, 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 dun. Come on. Cool deal. Okay. Awesome. And now let's go ahead and do the same thing for the second user. Go for the second user. And now I got to copy the address, the auto populate and done. And that's my address. Yes. Cool. Transact. There you go. Confirm. Okay. So we bought one NFT with one wallet, one NFT with another wallet. So now we're going to stake. But first, remember, we need to give approval to the staking smart contract to transfer our tokens, okay, from the wallet. How do we do that? You can see right here. And again, we can, when we do a Web3 interface, I, the user doesn't need to even do this, okay? So the first thing I gotta do, I, as the owner of the smart contract, remember, I have to set the staking smart contract as the controller of the token rewards because that's how it's going to mint those tokens and issue them as reward so i have to make sure that the staking smart contract it's allowed as the controller of the token smart contract okay so once we're done with that now we can move the wallet to the user wallet and i'm going to um i am going to stake with a completely different wallet this is the contract deployer this is the owner of the staking smart contract but in this case this is a normal user okay so we're going to use this wallet but first what we need to do i connected as a user i am going to tell i am going to copy the staking smart contract and tell the collection smart contract hey i want you to allow transfer of those NFTs to the staking. So this, this is the staking smart contract. I am giving rights to the collection as the user to move my NFTs from my wallet into the staking vault, okay? So I'm going to just set that, I'll send that request. Once we get that approved, I'll do the same thing for wallet number two, right? And it's just going to be the same value because this is a staking smart contract. We don't, we don't like, we don't need to like copy and paste the address of the holder. No, it's the staking smart contract. But I'm telling, I as an owner of my NFTs, hey, get rights to the staking smart contract to move those NFTs. Okay. So now let me change the wallet to this wallet and do the same thing. Okay. Confirm. So now we got two wallet, two holders giving approval to the staking smart contract to move the NFTs. Okay. And when we do that Web3, they don't even need to do this. Absolutely not. They just hit the stake and on the back end, you're actually doing all that process. Obviously, you ask the end user, hey, this is what we're doing. Are you in agreement? Boom. Clicks yes and done. Okay. Cool. So that's done. Let's try to stake using uh, different wallets. Okay. So let me go first with one of the user wallets. Again, this is a wallet that didn't deploy the smart contract. Nothing. It's just a, 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 someone that holds NFTs. So let me go ahead and stake. And this wallet, I believe it's holding token number one. Okay. So let me try one. See if that works. And let's see if we are lucky. And sure enough, I bet it's just going to work. Boom. NFT holder number one has staked the NFT in the vault. Let me go ahead and do it for NFT holder number two. Okay. I am going to now stake token two because that's this token that is that was bought by the NFT user two, right? So if, if we try with one, it's going to say fail because, you know, he's not holding token ID one. It's, to it's, it's token ID is token two. So we got two completely different users staking on the same smart contract. Okay. So that's how... We prove that we are 
allow to do that. So you got to make sure that those NFT holders are approving the staking smart contract from moving the NFTs, right? And where do you do that? You tell the collection smart contract, hey, please allow this staking smart contract to move my, my NFTs. I am giving you approval to do that. That's it. All right. Awesome. So let me wrap it up right here. So you saw it. And to answer your question, yes, yeah, there, there you go. You need to make sure that you are giving rights to the staking smart contract to move the NFTs that you're holding as an NFT buyer, right? So that, that was it. And I hope this was very informative for you. And if anyone was facing this issue, there you go. That's why. On the upcoming videos, I will be creating a Web3 dApp with the back end that will do that automatically. So your end users are not gonna be doing this because obviously they're not gonna be able to do this, right? So that's the point of developing a Web3 app to do that on the back end. Once they hit the staking function, then they will be asked to give approval to the staking smart contract and then finally stake the tokens. Alrighty, thank you so much. I hope you liked this video. If you like my content, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed to, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye.